Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services. This is a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. It's the most important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for both prelims and mains examination perspective will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 16th of August. The first news that is DG Yatra passenger processing system. We'll understand and you know, try to understand the detail about it. Second is India's first 3D printed cornea developed by the scientist. Again, something very important for your prelims examination. Third, India gift dronier aircraft to Sri Lanka. This is in light of the concern that was raised by India and amid the growing influence of China and Sri Lanka. Fourth, the panel moves for district level survey for adoptations. And the last is an editorial that is a diplomacy for Vixit war that is for developed India. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before that, if you are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful, do not forget to press the like button. So starting with the session, that is the first news, DG Yatra Passenger Processing System, something relevant for General Studies Paper 2, under the topic Government Policies and Intervention for the Development of Various Sectors and Issues Arising from a Design and Implementations. So recently, the Delhi International Airport, which is being run by the GMR, this is a group, that have announced the soft launch of the center's DG Yatra initiative and they have come out with the rollout of the beta version of its app on the Android platform. Still, we have no clarity about the iOS platform, but for Android platform, this app beta version was launched, which will help passengers to process and travel hassle-free. We'll see the detail how it will actually work. Now, what is DG Yatra app? So DG Yatra basically is a pure initiative. Ki. It's a passenger processing system based on the facial recognition technology so this is basically based on the facial recognitions technology or even you can call it frt right so this is all run on the pilot basis especially it started in delhi and be moving across other cities like mumbai kochi hyderabad bangalore and other parts of the country now dg Yatra has envisaged that the travelers pass to the various checkpoints of the airport can go through paperless and contactless processes using the specific features, that is the facial features. So this whole app's ki jo feature is given facial recognition. And facial feature is a significant feature that will authenticate passengers' ke travels. Ko authenticate karegi. And it will allow to be linked with the boarding pass. I'll tell you how it will actually function. Now with this technology, the entry of the passenger would be automatically processed via facial recognition system. Whether it's check of points, ki baat ho, entry ho at the airport, security checks ho, and even for the aircraft boarding pass, these DG app or you can say DG Yatra app will definitely help to get all things done at one shot. Now, how to use this DG Yatra facilities? So to use this facility, first and foremost, you need to install an app called DG Yatra app from the Google Play Store because it has been recently, you know, basically the platform is only available at the Play Store. Very soon it will be available on iOS also. Now the user can register themselves by using their Aadhaar credentials followed by the selfie with the Aadhaar card, right? Now they have to also upload the vaccination certificate which was issued by the government of India through the COVID credentials. Now this is, these are some of the mandatory parts. Once you are done with the procedures, you are good to go and then the person will have to scan his boarding pass for whomsoever flight or aircraft is traveling you need to upload that and the qr code of the barcode would be required and these de details or credential will be shared with the airport authorities the concerned airport authorities now for entry into the airport the passenger will need to scan the boarding pass at the e-gate with the facial recognition system that is installed there right and a similar method will be applicable for entry into the checkpoints also. 
इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ डीजी यात्रा ऐप की अगर बात करें दिस इज बिंग इम्प्लीमेंटेड बाय डीजी यात्रा फाउंडेशन दिस इज अगेन रेलिवेंट फॉर मेनी अदर कम्पिटेटिव एग्जामिनेशन आपको ये पता होना चाहिए कि पूरी इम्प्लीमेंटेशन कैसे हो रही है दिस विल बी वर्किंग ऑन अ ज्वाइंट वेंचर कंपनी बेसिस विद एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया जहाँ पे एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया इज स्टेक ट्वेंटी सिक्स परसेंट है ना दिस विल बी एक्सटैंडेड ग्रेजुअली टू अदर एयरपोर्ट्स लाइक बेंगलुरु डेली हैदराबाद एंड मुंबई एयरपोर्ट इवन फॉर द कोची इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट सो दीज फाइव स्टेक होल्डर्स इक्वली होल्ड रिमेनिंग सेवेंटी फोर परसेंट ऑफ द सेम और एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया के पास ट्वेंटी सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ स्टेक राइट Now the DG Yatra Foundation will be the custodian of the passengers ID validation process and it will also define the criteria for the compliance and guidance of the local airport system so this is these two are again the important point that you can take a note of and there will be a regular audit of the various compliances and guidelines which include the guidelines on security image quality and data privacy right although supreme court ki already kafi judgment hai data privacy ko lekar ke so this would be defined by the dg yatra guideline for the local airport biometric boarding system now objective kya hai dg yatra app ki why it has come what is the main objective how it will help the passengers the first it aims to digitalize the current manual process and to bring a better efficiency in overall customer or you can say the passenger experience for the airports now enhancing the security standards for improving the current system performance achieving through the existing infrastructure using the digital framework and last but not least that is enhancing passenger experience to provide simple and easy experience to all air travelers now this is a graph this is a image that will help you understand how it actually functions aap iske screenshot bhi le sakte hain to get an idea see how it actually work ticket codes are there then the airport enrollment kiosk is there एयरपोर्ट एंट्री गेट्स होती है उसके बाद अकॉर्डिंगली यू कैन रीच आउट टू द बैग देन अगेन पी एस सी इज देयर फॉर द फेस रिकोगशन आइडेंटिफिकेशन एंड इफ यूर बोर्डिंग इंटरनेशनल फ्लाइट यू हैव टू रीच आउट टू द इमिग्रेशन यू गेट टू द बोर्डिंग पास बोर्डिंग ई गेट्स एंड फाइनली यू रीच आउट टू द एयरक्राफ्ट सो दिस इज हाउ द एंटायर प्रोसेस इज अ हेजल फ्री पेपर लेस विच विल हेल्प द पैसेंजर्स एयर ट्रेवलर्स टू गेट थिंग्स डन एट द अर्लीस्ट Now moving to the other news this is again significantly important India's first 3D printed cornea developed by scientists relevant for your general studies paper 3 that is achievement of India in science and technology indianizations of technology and development of new technology this is prechiman relevant for prelims specifically or mains mein bhi kai bar short questions ke form mein aap se ye sawal puche ja sakte hain Now for the first time in India the researcher in the city has successfully developed 3d printer artificial cornea with to transplanted in rabbit eye right to so, ye transplantation jo hai rabbit ke eye mein ki gayi thi right and where it was done it was done in hyderabad so researcher from lv prashad institute that is lvpei indian institute of technology hyderabad and center for molecular and biology they have collaborated to develop 3d printing cornea for human donor coronal tissues so again this name of the organization is again important and coronal damage is leading to the cause of blindness worldwide with more than 1.5 million new cases of coronal blindness reported every year so this is the density and footfall of the cases that has been reported now as a 3d printed cornea it is composed of the material that is derived from the human coronal tissues that is biocompatible natural and free of any kind of animal residues so this is how the process was carried out you can see the team of the doctors that have successfully completed the process and this is how it has been executed in a rabbit initially now this was complete indigenous process indigenously developed ki gayi hai the 3d printing and artificial cornea was developed indigenously through the government and philanthropic funding and this is completely a natural product which contain no synthetic component free of any kind of animal residue and safe to use for the patients now with the recent advancement of this regenerative medicines jahan pe tissue engineering ke examples ya fir field mein isko count ki jati hai this research used as a decellularized coronal tissue matrix and stem cells that from the human eyes to develop a unique biometric hydrogen abhi iski patent jo hai wo pending hai 
that would be done because these are some of the indigenous technology that India has developed. So definitely a patent is required. So there was also to use a background for 3D printing in Cornea. Great achievement, first time in the history of our country. Advantages kya hai bio inks ke agar baat kare. This is again an important topic for the prelims. So bio ink is used to make the 3D printing cornea. This is the essential component with which it helped to build the 3D printing cornea and can save basically army personnel who are injured in any kind of war that is ongoing. So here the coronial perforations can be preserved and ja even prevent the infections during the war injuries. And even for the remote area, no tertiary eye care facility is required. So it's an indigenous technology, indigenous method which can be imparted even for low amenities hospitals. The biometrics, the biomaking approach provides an optimistic micro environment for stromal regenerations while maintaining the curvature of thickness of the bioprinted cornea to facilitate the surgical implications. Another news that is India gift Dronier aircraft to Sri Lanka, something relevant for general studies paper too. That is India and its neighborhood relations. So recently India has handed over the Dronier aircraft to Sri Lanka, reaffirming the security ties with the Sri Lanka, right? And this will definitely enable Sri Lanka to tackle multiple challenges like human and drugs trafficking, smuggling and other organized crime like in form of coastal water and basically it will also help them to manage the coastal water more efficiently. Now such cooperation is envisaged to add further capability to provide capacity to Sri Lanka in line with the India's vision of Sagar that is security and growth for all in the region. India has been vocal about this initiative and if you are comparing any you know, countries that is Iceland nation ki agar baat kare, Chai Sri Lanka ho, Maldives ho, is tarah ke agar countries ke aap example likh rahe, Sagar initiatives ke baare mein zarur quote kare. Now, this was the image that was officially released, right? This is the Dronier aircraft. Now, what is the advantage of this aircraft? This aircraft act as a force multiplier that will enable Sri Lanka to tackle multiple challenges, just when aapko bataya, human or drug trafficking ke liye, smuggling and any kind of organized crime. And the aircraft will contribute more towards security of the Indian Ocean region, right? If you talk about IOR specifically, this region ki agar baat kare, iske security or surveillance mein bhi kaafi zyada madad karegi. Now, training to operate aircraft, government of India will be providing the technical support. So the Indian Navy uh, has already provided extensive training to the team of Sri Lanka Navy and the Air Force to operate the maritime surveillance craft. And India will provide Sri Lanka two drone aircraft which are being manufactured by the state-run aerospace major Hindustan Aeronautical Limited. So HAL is manufacturing and in the next time or two drone air will India Sri Lanka ko deke, as a gift. Now India is concerned about the growing uh, basically uh, presence of China in the region. So countering China is again a big factor for India. India wants to China to counter China, so this Dornier aircraft gift is an important aspect, an important angle. Hoga pe. So India like looking forward with this that a day before the Chinese uh, ship that is Wan Wang 5 dock that was there in the southern port of the Hamanbota that was there for the replenish purposes and even India has raised concern with this. So ship was originally scheduled to arrive on the port by 11th of August that was delayed in the absence of the permission by the Sri Lankan authorities. And Sri Lanka has asked the China to defer the visit amid the India's concern over it. Right? India has raised concern officially. The statement was made by the Ministry of External Affairs. And recently, Sri Lanka has granted the port access to the vessel from August 16 to 22. So this is how this will definitely help this Dornier aircraft will help to counter the China's presence in Sri Lanka region. Now the other news that is panel moves district level district level survey for adoption. Panel ne kaha hai ki district level ki adoptions karne ki zarurat hai survey ke liye. This is important for general studies paper too. That is government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations. So to address the growing number of orphan children in our country. The parliamentary panel has recommended the district level survey. District level survey ki baat ki gai hai, right? 
So this will proactively identify the orphan and abandoned children. The country has million of orphan children. There are only and only two for three zero children are available for adoptions. While the number of parents desiring to bring home children is growing rapidly, we have some rules and procedures before any adoption process take place. We have CARA, Central Adoption Authorities, and we have State Adoption Authorities as well. Now, Parliamentary Standing Committee ki kya report? As per the report, which was stable in the Parliament, the report titled is the Review of Guardianship and Adoption Law in the Parliament. And Parliamentary Standing Committee has said that it is important to get a true picture on the number of children who are orphaned and abandoned through district level survey, and the data needs to be updated on a regular basis. So this is again a concern. Even a question specifically in mains examination can be expected in this aspect. Now, according to the report, there were twenty-seven thousand nine thirty-nine. Prospective parents registered with the Child Adoption Authority, Resource Authority, which is known as CARA, and this was till 2021, and nearly 18,000 in 2027. In comparison, if we talk about it, through the total of six double nine six orphan children, abandoned and surrendered children residing in the child care adoption facilities, and only two four three zero were declared legal free from the adoption of the Child Welfare Committee. तो यहाँ पे गवर्नमेंट को ये भी चेक करना होता है कि किसी भी तरह की कोई बेसिकली uh, डिस्प्यूट ना हो दिस इज फ्री फ्रॉम एनी काइंड ऑफ लीगैलिटी नाउ द वेटिंग टाइम फॉर एडोप्टेशन टू हैज इंक्रीज टू थ्री इयर्स फ्रॉम वन ईयर फॉर द पास्ट फाइव इयर्स एंड द टोटल नंबर ऑफ चिल्ड्रेन एडोप्टेड इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सम रिकमेंडेशन दैट वॉज गिवन बाय द कमिटी द पार्लियामेंट्री स्टैंडिंग कमिटी So it suggested there should be a monthly meeting that should be chaired by the district magistrate, who is DM, or if it is district collector, right? So there would be a person responsible to hold meeting in every district to ensure that the orphan and abandoned child found begging in the streets are produced before the child welfare committee and are made available for the adoption at the earliest. So government is looking forward that is that की चीजों को promote ना किया जाए और कई ऐसे adoption methodology है उनको लाया जाए and even welfare should be given they these children should should be provided with adequate educations they should be provided free of cost uh, accommodations fooding and other lodging facilities now call for cautions government said that there are six five two five children on the care institution registered under the juvenile justice act. On September 30, 2021, and the exercise of children institutions by the Women and Children Development Ministry in its report has said this is for 2018. Found that 3.7 lakh children need a care and protection of these homes, and the latest category of children who have single parent has increased, or it is 1.2, 30 percent of total, and of which any parent just 11 percent. That is amount of 41. Seven three zero. So this number is not that relevant, but if you can write the percentage form, mein, so that would be an ad advantage for you in the mains examination. Now moving to the editorial of the day, that is diplomacy for Vixit Bharat for developed India, relevant for general studies paper two. That is functions and responsibility of union and states and issues and challenges pertaining to the federal structure of our country. So I'll be simplifying this editorial under three important subheads. And these subheads include India diplomatic journey, demand for the new foreign policy strategies, and the foreign policy talks, right or task. So this entire editorial focuses upon a theme, which is India's diplomatic journey. On the eve of 75 year of independence, Prime Minister has outlined some of the ambitions, and he called for making India. Make India a developed country, a Vixit Bharat by 2047. This is a date which will be marking 100 year of our independence, right? So achieving this would be a great task for, and this is a duty for all of us, not only for the government. So achieving the demand will demand for a significant changes in India's foreign policies and tradition also, not only at the individual level, at indigenous level, at domestic level, but we need to work at the foreign policy level as well. इंडिया के डिप्लोमेटिक जर्नी की अगर बात करें इंडिया डिप्लोमेटिक डिस्कोर्स हैज रिमेन टेप इन द फ्रेमवर्क एंड दैट हैज इमर्ज एज इंडिया इंडिया वॉज वीक एज वनरेबल सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर को बट सिचुएशन हैज इम्प्रूव अलॉट द फियर ऑफ डेवलपिंग नेशंस 
cannot be a guiding principle for diplomacy of a developed nation. So we need to be vocal on the part that yes, we are developing economy, but we are developing with a greater pace, which can reach up to the developed economy. While India is well on its becoming the part of the third largest economy, if we talk about the world, India is on the stage, on the momentum, where the world is the third largest economy in the next two few years. And it does not necessarily make it a developed nation. Definitely, it's not a developed nation, but we need to work upon all other aspects. So, there are some tasks that we have to do indigenously so that all of these targets can be completed. Among them, the first is promoting the social justice, internal unity, economic modernization, resilient political institutions, and last but not the least is the deep basis of science and technology, which even call for the innovations. Now, demand for a new foreign policy strategy ki baat ki gayi hai. and these policies should be uh, not only for a geographic imperative, it should also work upon some important aspects and the focus should be there on changing the nature of Indian economy, emerging of new regional challenges, right? emerging, shifting the global power hierarchy at all demand for the new foreign strategies and evolution of external conditions. So, ye kuch aise top priority focus area honge jahan pe hame new foreign policy strategies pe kaam karne ki zarurat hai now foreign policy tasks ki agar baat kare there are three important tasks that government of india need to do to come across the journey of a viksit bharat that is for the developed india so the first among them is to overcome the residual legacy of partitions that has undermined india's geopolitical positions right Resolving the problem that is left over the partition of India in the North Western frontier look quite despite the efforts successive the Prime Minister in the last three decades, right? And it is also needed to double down the strength in regional and trans-regional institutions. So definitely we need to work upon this important aspects which will definitely make India uh, basically make it possible to reach out to the developed countries league. Now the second is about coping up with the growing power gap in with china china has been the greatest beneficiaries of india's participations or india's partitions ki agar baat kare isse agar sabse zyada kisi ko benefit hui as a country that was china china has unified itself and extended to the civil war in 1949 just after india chose to divide so jab india divide ho rahi thi china apne aap ko unified kar rahi thi the third is that regards to the economy to become the third largest economy in the world we need to again work on our geopolitical and balance of power. This is an important aspect. And it is also about the global leadership in managing the enormous consequences of unfolding technology revolutions, stabilizing the economic order, addressing the challenges of climate change and pandemics. Now, in the way to 2047, that is down the line 100 years, India independence go, India will have to temper a soaring universalization and even it call for the geopolitical sensitivity and combine the pursuit of multilateralism. Abhi G20 ki uh, presidentship India ke paas aane wali for a year span. This would be time where India can forecast its proactive measures for the global arena. Even other important organizations include the United Nations and WTO. So in sabhi jago ke alawe India mein jitni bhi like-minded countries hai jo India ko help kar sakti hai, un countries ke saath bhi hume ek achhi coordination bana kar rakhni hai or important multilateral forum we have to be vocal on the part of geopolitical sensitivity right so this is how the target of developed economy can be chased out now moving to the mcq questions of the day before i proceed just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions the first question the correct option is a for second question the correct option is c today's mcq for practice aapko batana hai which of the following has released the covid performance index howard university Serum Institute of India, Lowe Institute of World Health Organization. The second question of the day is the fourth edition of Future Investment Initiative Forum was hosted in which of the following cities, whether it was Sweden, Lavos, Riyadh or New Delhi. So do check it out for the correct options. This was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the MCQ questions. If you have any other concern, you can let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.